Welcome back, thrill seekers, to another episode of History and Spooky Tales. Today we are traveling to the heart of France, explore one of the most intriguing and haunting castles in the world, Chateau de Brissac. Let's uncover its rich history and spine-chilling tales. I'm going to butcher these names and pronounce some words wrong and some names wrong. I'm so I'm apologizing for that in advance because some words are just hard and I find these spooky tales and history very interesting and even from different countries. Hi everyone, it's Aida and today we are exploring Chateau de Brissac, known as the Giant of the Lord Valley. This castle not only bo boasts a fascinating history, but also a reputation for being one of the most haunted places in the France. Let's dive into its past. The origins of Chateau de Brissac dated back in 11th century when it was built as a fortress by the Counts of over the centuries. It has been transformed and expanded, sp expanded, especially under the ownership of the Brissac family, who, who acquired it in the 16th century. Duke of Brissac, it was he who undertook the expensive renovation in the, in the early 17th century, giving the chateau its Renaissance elegance. The castle we see today, with its seven floors and 204 rooms, it's a testament to his vision. But Chateau de Brissac is not just famous for its grandeur. It's also known for its ghostly resident, La Dame Verte, or Green Lady. She, Charlotte de Brise, was the illegitimate, illegitimate daughter of King Charles VII of France and his favorite mistress, Agnes Sorel. Despite her illegitimacy, she was married into a noble family, a common practice in the time to ensure advantageous alliances. Charlotte was married to her cousin, Jacques de Bries, or Jacques, Jacques, I think I pronounced that right. He was a nobleman with prestigious title and substantial, substantial wealth. Jacques was prominent figure served as a grand huntsman of Normandy and prestigious position in the French court. The marriage was likely arranged to straighten political ties and consolidate power with the, within the family. However, the marriage was far from happy. The union between Charlotte and Jacques was strained, strained with accounts suggestions a lack of affection and understanding between uh, the two. Jacques was a man of duty and responsibility, but it seemed he failed to win Charlotte's love or perhaps neglected her emo emotional needs. The age difference, personality clashes, or simply the pressure of an arranged marriage might have contributed to Charlotte's dissatisfaction. Feeling trapped in an unhappy marriage, Charlotte is said to have sat solace in arms of another man. The identity of her lover is shrouded in mystery, various accounts speculating about who he might have been. Some suggest he was a young nobleman, possibly a close acquaintance or even a member of the household staff, who offered Charlotte the attention and the affection she craved. Or craved. <laughs> Charlotte's affair was not just an act of defense against a loveless marriage, but also a dangerous game. Adultery was a serious offense in noble circles of the time, particularly for women. It brought not only personal disgrace, but also the potential for, for severe punishment. The story of Charlotte's murder is a chilling and is it tragic. According to legend, Jacques the breeze discovered his wife's infidelity one fateful night. 
Accounts vary on how Jack learned of the affair. Some say he caught them in the act, while others suggested he was informed by a ser servant, or simply grew suspicion over time. Consumed by rage and betrayal, Jack took matters in uh, his own hands. The most widely accepted uh, version of the story is that Jack murdered both Charlotte and her lover in a fit of jealous fury. The murder was brutal. Charlotte and her lover were both killed in her chambers with the, within the chateau. The method of the murder varies in different retelling, with some suggesting that Jack used a sword or dagger, a common weapon at the time. After committing the murders, Jacques de Brise faced the consequences of his action. However, he was a nobleman with considerable influences. He was not subjected to the same legal repercussions that commoner might have faced. It believed that Jacques managed to avoid several punishment, possibly due to his status and norms of the time, where honor killing, particularly in case of adultery were sometimes overlooked or treated leniently. Jacques continued to live in the chateau after the murders, though it's said that he was haunted by guilt and the memories of the fateful night. Some stories suggest that he lived in a relative isolation, troubled what he'd have done. Chateau once a symbol of prestige and power, became a place of sorrow and unease. The tower room is particularly not notorious. Guests and staff have reported hearing eerie moans and wails, believed to be cries of the Green Lady. Some have even seen her spectral figure gazing of the window, forever waiting for her lover who will never return. Imagine staying in the room and hearing ghostly whispers in the dead of night. Would you dare? I will not. Ooh, spooky. Phantom footsteps are common occurrence in the Chateau de Brissac. Late at night, the sounds of heavy, deliberated steps can be heard echoing through the hallways and staircases. But when you investigate, no one is there. Other strange phenomena include sudden drops in temperature, flickering lights, and even the feeling of being watched. Some guests have reported seeing shadow moving of the corner of their eye, only to find themselves alone in the room. There you have it. The hunting history of Chateau de Brissac, from the tragic tales of Green Lady to the eerie footsteps in the halls. This castle is a hotspot for paranormal activities. If you ever get the chance to visit, keep your eyes and ears open. You might just have a ghostly encounter of your own. Thanks for joining me on this spine chilling adventure. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more spooky stories from around the world. Until next time, stay curious and stay spooky.